Okay, so the topic for the week is, go is going to be centered around the power platform. So with the power platform is one of those things that is, is a set of technologies as part of the no-code, low-code evolution that's happening here. But I, I just really wanted to make sure that everyone is understanding exactly what's taking place here. Companies and businesses are moving faster than ever. They have to be able to respond to market conditions, even health conditions or you know, pandemics within the world or the environment or your country or your city or your state, whatever you're in. They have to respond to that quickly. And from there, there's a lot of business processes, there's some procedures, there's a lot of things that need to be in place in order to respond effectively to that. There are market conditions, there are clients and client consumer behaviors that's shifting and directing and new way of buying things, new way of being serviced, new way of presenting products and leveraging, you know, social media and, and, and so on and so forth. So things are getting a bit complex from a technology perspective, as well as an information perspective, as even from a social media perspective and what's happening on the Internet with Web 2.0 social media heavy, and then Web3 and the metaverse and all this stuff is coming. So, and Bitcoin and, you know, the whole currency, like a lot of things are changing. A lot of things, what used to be solid foundations and footing is, is being rocked and shaped. So how do you, especially from a career perspective, take the most advantage of that? One of those aspects would be the no-code, low-code evolution. And especially in the Microsoft ecosystem, it's going to be the power platform. And that's what I want to talk about this week. In the power platform, so let's just level set. Let's go to the whiteboard here. The power platform is really going to be made into, is made composed of five main components. All right, so in number one, it's going to be power apps. Then you're going to have power automate. Then you have power BI. Then you have power pages. And then you're going to have the power virtual agent. So very quickly, what we're going to do during this week, we're going to go through each one of these and then just kind of highlight very high level, but what you can build, different type of solutions that you can build with these, but very, very, very quickly, because, you know, I, I want to get this out and get this preference and, and primed and ready for the week. Um, let's start with the power apps. Power apps is really meant to build forms, mobile apps. Uh, and other interfaces are really data gathering solutions within within your your solution or your app that you're going to build, right? So some of these forms can't integrate very tightly with the SharePoint list. So you grab it, you're building this form, you, you're grabbing the data, they click submit, they click save, and all that gets stored in a SharePoint list. Power Automate is going to be the workflow engine behind the scenes that says, okay, once this information gets in, I need to process. And usually they have two main triggers. There's a, there, are few, there are a few triggers, but these are the two common ones. One, when a new item is created in that SharePoint list or document library, trigger and do something. Or when the item is updated in that SharePoint list or document library, trigger and do something. And I'm, I'm saying SharePoint uh, in this example, but understand that, that these data sources, Power Apps and Power Automate, can actually be configured right, to different data sources. So you can have the same going to a, an Azure, a SQL that's hosting in Azure, a SQL that's hosting in on-prem. Uh, you can have the, the new data source, a relatively new data source uh, by Microsoft called Dataverse, which is very robust, can handle billions of records. It has a very robust search engine. And the security model is going to be more robust than what you account, uh, assume, uh, account for accustomed to, sorry, in uh, SharePoint list, where you can do security at the column level as well as item level security at the row level, and you can create your own row. So very robust and very you know foundational security model to support it. Now, Power BI is going to be that dashboard or reporting engine. So if you're familiar with like Tableau or even OOO school, uh, SSRS, you know, reporting in SQL Server uh, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be really meant for power users to uh, create their own dashboards. They can pull data from all over the place. They have a power query, which is going to be the query engine that kind of intersect these really uh, dis dis uh, disconnected data sources. But you identify a primary key here and then identify a key here, create your joints and all this other good stuff. Uh, power BI is going to be that engine or that technology stack for that. Power Pages, this is very interesting, aka used to be Power Portal, but Power Pages are going to solve some of those business to consumer 
our extra net B2B type uh, scenarios, right? Where someone is not part of your Azure AD, they're not part of your uh, organization security model, they need to authenticate from the outside, from the outside of your firewall, and then you take some of that information and then through Power Automate and some of these other technology tools integrated within your intranet or Microsoft Teams or SharePoint list or database on-prem, whatever, but it's Power Pages is going to be that external wall, right, where you can actually have anonymous access. You get a public URL. Uh, you can even take it to where users will authenticate, and the authentication components are more than just Azure AD, right? So they can authenticate using their current LinkedIn profile, their current Facebook profile, their current uh, Gmail profile, so on and so forth. So all of those things that we look for with either onboarding clients or interacting with their clients or onboarding vendors, interacting with the vendors, and watch this, even new hires, right? You have a, a new uh, employee or potential employee or even a candidate, right, before they become officially an employee, they're going to interact with you using all their personal information. And once they come on board, now you can flip a switch, provision their Azure AD and so on and so forth. But all that activity before their, their first day at work, the interviewing process, the prospecting, the, you know, the so on, you know, they, they sign the offer letter, like that, that, that gray area, right? Like, okay, they sign, but they're, they don't have an account yet, but we still need to give them all this information before that the Power Pages is going to allow you to create those type of solutions. And lastly, the Power Virtual Agent. Now, this is the one, me personally, I'm not that familiar with, but it's really, it's more of a chatbot technology, right? So, you know, imagine, you know, you, we've seen it all. You go to the website, there's a little chat button in, in the bottom, say talk to a customer service or speak to an agent, and you start mm -hmm. to type in the response is sub-second instant because you're, you're interacting with a bot. And it's really meant for customer service or customer support because basically what you do, you put those frequently asked questions loaded into your bot so, so, mm -hmm. so they can get an answer right away. That's why the response is sub-second. As soon as the, you expose or exhaust um, the... Um, those FAQs or what the, the virtual agent or the artificial intelligent engine can do, then it hands you off to a live agent and then they will take it from there. The good news is, especially from an end user experience, I don't have to repeat myself and provide information that I already provided because everything that you provided to that bot is handed over to the agent and you can flow from there. As you can hear and recognize, I'm, as I explain that, I know you got a lot of light bulbs and things sparking though, how you can leverage this and that's what the Power Virtual Agent. So why is the Power Platform so important? Why you should be, you should be paying special attention to it? And more importantly, be building up your skill set to master these technologies. Even if you don't master all of them, the ones I would highly recommend focus on is the top three. You should really be very comfortable, fluent, and just a, a ninja in the Power Apps and Power Automate and understand how to pull all that data that you're creating using those solutions to give executive teams and management and do roll-up type reporting and dashboards using Power BI. Those are going to be critical. Why are they important? Because I can tell you this from my experience, and I've been playing around with these for at least three years now. I've been in SharePoint and technologies for 21 years, right? But when these technologies came up, it was more than just InfoPath and SharePoint Design. It was more than just Nintex Forms and Nintex Workflow and K2 Forms and all those other third-party tools that we used to build, those business applications on SharePoint. These are game changers because one is more than just SharePoint. You can interact with any other data source, right? SQL, Oracle, DB2, 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 is DB2 still around? But you get my point though, it's more than just SharePoint and they have an external component to it and they got a virtual agent component to it and they have rich dashboarding and reporting uh, to that. And, and I can tell you for, for a fact, InfoPath compared to Power Apps is no comparison. Power Apps eclipse InfoPath every day of the week, no problem. No problem, because InfoPath is more of a, and I'm getting to these lessons for the next day, but let me just leave you with this. Understand the concept here, because as soon as you wrap your head around this concept, you will understand exactly where these technologies are going and how to position yourself to get the most out of your career. Power Apps is more of a Lego block solution, meaning that you can do whatever you want, just figure out how to put these Lego blocks together. 
And when I say figure out how to put these Lego blocks together, that's the creativity. This is probably the first time, well, no, I think the creativity piece has been there, but it's more important now than ever before, right? The creativity, especially when you're trying to create something is, okay, I have these Lego blocks. Each one of these blocks is best of breed in these certain areas. How do I take those strengths from this block, the strengths from this block, the strengths from this block to create the solution or experience I'm trying to build to solve this business requirement, right? That's where the creativity really comes in. So it's really Lego blocks. You can do whatever you want, however you want. There's best practices and guardrails that you should stay within. And we're going to talk through those, you know, when we get to each one of these. But that's the key. Whereas InfoPath is more prescriptive. If you want to do a repetitive section, here's the control to do that. If you want to grab and, and save data, here's the button. This is the way you do that. It's very prescriptive. If you try to get outside of those guardrails, then that's when you get creative and hacky with JavaScript and API calls and doing these weird kind of like, eh, it wasn't designed to do this, but eh, here we go. But you had to do what you had to do to solve the business requirement. So with that, learn the power platform, focus on the, the top three and don't get left behind because the tidal wave is coming. The, way, the old way of doing things is, is a, it's a thing of the past. Now, here's another thing, and I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. Businesses that need to, who are a very aggressive and who's in tune with their clients and in tune with the market and understand things are changing, they need the power platform because you can create a solution in the power platform. And, and understand, this is not just for power users. This is not a play toy, Right. Dev, solution architects, pro devs are doubling down on this technology. Why? Because it's exponentially faster than everything, anything we've seen before. I don't care if you're a guru in .NET, uh, the full stack technology, the technology stack, Python or whatever. Like, Pick your technology of choice to where you're actually spitting out applications at record time. Like You're the best of the best in your organization. Uh, I promise you. I can pair you up against someone who's very comfortable with these, not even the best, just very comfortable, and they will burn, and they would they will code you under the table, right? Because a lot of these technologies is drag and drop. They're not kits, right? You're not going to get a kit that says, uh, "Here's a help desk form," or "Here's a, a CRM system," or "Here's a da 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 da." But once you understand the Lego blocks and know how to put these together you can move exponentially faster than any of your pro dev counterparts. And that's why it's a game changer. And it's going to be engineers in this space that companies who are looking to pivot, market, new way of working, being very aggressive in their industry, in their space, trying to blow their competitors out of the water. This enables them to move fast and not move fast and sloppy, but move fast and efficient and still hit your regulatory guidelines, processes, procedures, and so on and so forth. But what does that look like an organization? To find that out, you need to check me out in the next video. I'll see you tomorrow.